Simo! What's going on guys, it's Simo. Today I wanted to bring you a video discussing Pot of Desires, probably the most desired card out of the Dark Illusion, the newest set just to come out. There's a lot of controversy and polarization around this card. It's kind of divided the community because half the community loves this card to pieces and the other half thinks it's absolute shit. So what I wanted to do was I kind of wanted to take a constructive approach, kind of delve into some of the mathematics of the card itself so that you can make your own opinion on whether or not you think the card is good. So for those of you who don't know what this card does, what it is is on activation as a cost, you banish the top 10 cards of your deck face down and then you draw two cards, and you can only activate it once per turn. Now, the one thing I do want to say is, those banished cards that go face down, you as the player using Pot of Desires are allowed to look at those face down cards. Your opponent is not allowed to look at them, but you are. So you can look at what you've banished off of the activation requirement for this card. And also, if you get hit by Mystical Wreck Panel, I feel fucking sorry for you, because that is gonna suck. But, without further ado, um, yeah, so it's basically Pot of Greed with a somewhat high activation cost. It is a plus one because you are using the card and then drawing two more. The banishing ten does not matter, but that really does scare a lot of people that you're banishing ten cards off the top of your deck because a lot of people think, oh, well, what if I banish all the best cards in my deck? Well, mathematically speaking, that's actually a lot harder to do, you know, in theory. Rather, actually, I should say it's a lot harder, you know, mathematically for that to happen than you might think. So what I wanted to do was, like I said, delve into the card a little bit, kind of present you guys some of the numbers so that you can um, make your own conclusion, essentially. So all of these numbers are based on a 40-card deck. Um, I'm going to present the percentages for going first as well as going second. I'm only going to say the percentages for going first, and down below you're going to see also the percentage for going second because there is an extra card you draw going second. So that does alter the numbers a little bit. It's only by like one percentage point maybe at most. It's a little bit marginal at that point. But it is relevant to know if you are going first or second. So I felt that was important. I've got the numbers over here. So you might see me look off camera for a little bit just to remind myself of some of the figures because there's a lot of them. But I'm going to go ahead and get right into it. So... When you start a game, you draw five cards, and I'm going to assume, like I said, you're going first. So now you have 35 cards left in your deck because you're holding five. So if the first thing you do is activate Pot of Desires and banishing 10 cards, I want to go ahead and explain what the percentages are of banishing a certain number of a certain number of cards in your deck. Basically, if you have X many cards of one type in your deck, mainly being if you have three of one card, what the percentage is of banishing one of it, or two of it, or all three of it, and etc, cetera, etc, cetera, et cetera, essentially. So, the first card is, if you have a one of card, so say maybe Soul Charge, Upstart, any basically card that's on the limited list, essentially, you have a 28.6% chance of banishing that one card off of those 10. Then, if you have a two of card, for example, so any card you might play two of, you have a 42% chance to banish one of those two, but then you have only a 7.6% chance to banish both copies of that two of card that you're playing. And then when you get into the three of's, it gets a little bit interesting. So, as you'd expect, it's going to be high. If you want to banish one of three of, I guess you don't want to, but the probability of you banishing one of three of a copy of a card in your deck is 45.8%. So more than likely when you activate Desires, any card that you have a three of has a pretty good chance of getting banished off that 10. The probability of banishing two of the three of is 17.2%, which isn't exactly too high. And the probability of banishing all three copies of a three of in your deck is 1.8%. That is extremely, extremely low. And the reason I want to highlight that is for this reason. Let's take a deck like Blue Eyes. Now, Blue Eyes, the only real way that you lose if you play Pot of Desires is like if you were to banish all three of your Blue Eyes, maybe all three of your, all, all your alternative dragons, I suppose, but basically it would have to be something ridiculous like that. And 1.8% is the number that I really want to highlight here because the odds of that happening are just so astronomically low. That's literally, if you want to round it up to 2%, that's fine. That's one in 50 games. A tournament is not even 50 games long. So you might, statistically speaking, have one bad pot of desires throughout the entire tournament length. 
that might banish all three of your blue eyes or all three of your alternative dragons. So that just goes to show that the card isn't as bad as you may think. And because of that, you have the ability, you're still going to have all your engine pieces. And because you can look at the face down cards that you've banished, you're still going to know what's left in your decks. So you're not going to make any inoptimal plays. Sure, there is a bit of variance and it cannot go your way every single time. But for the ability for a plus one, it's a pretty significant trade-off. And that's again what I just want to highlight. Another thing I really want to highlight is with Pot of Desires is that so many decks have spell cards that are key pieces of engines that are going to get them the cards that they want. For example, I'm just going to keep using Blue Eyes here as an example. Melody of Awakening Dragon. If you open a hand of Melody of the Awakening Dragon and Pot of Desires, you're more than likely going to use Melody first to grab your Blue Eyes and your Alternative Dragon, or, you know, any other combination depending on the rest of your hand, to make sure you have your engine pieces before activating Pot of Desires to banish 10 and draw 2. That way you're ensuring you have some key pieces of your engine and not risking the fact that you might banish, you know, anything else and taking that amount of variance out of it, ultimately putting you in the much better position because you just got the plus one. And so that's another thing I just want to focus on because a lot of people aren't really realizing the fact that you can search out all your good cards because there's so many cards that do that before you use Pot of Desires and risk losing them all to the activation cost of Pot of Desires. So another thing I wanted to focus on was the math and probability of what you can actually draw off Pot of Desires. So this is interesting. So again, going first, you've drawn five cards here at 35. Then if you were just to activate Pot of Desires straight away, you banish 10, putting you down to a 25 card deck. And so based off of a 25 card deck, I wanted to kind of do the probability of what the odds are of you drawing, you know, a one of, a two of, or a three of in those two cards, assuming, you know, depending on how many are left in the deck. So you can take these figures and you can look and see, okay, I have this many of this card left in my deck. This is my probability of drawing it. So I felt that that was pretty relevant too. So to start off with, you have an 8% chance to draw a one of. So in those two cards that you draw, say you have a soul charge left in your deck, you have an 8% chance to draw that soul charge. So that's not bad considering that if you didn't have those 10 cards banished, it would be a much lower percentage that you were gonna draw that soul charge. Um, moving on, there is a 15.3% chance to draw one copy of a two of. So if you still have two copies of you know a two of left in your deck, or if you have two copies of a three of left, then you have a 15.3% chance to get into one. So that's pretty good. Um, you only have a 0.3% chance to draw both two ofs that are left in your deck. So that's really, really low. But that's one of people's biggest fears is that they use Pot of Desires, banish 10, and then draw two more Pot of Desires if you're running three in the deck. But it's only a 0.3% chance that that's going to happen. So again, that's something else I wanted to kind of highlight just to alleviate some people's fears on that as well. So continuing on... If you have a three of left in your 25 card deck, you actually have a 22% chance to draw it off of part of desire. So a one in five mainly between one in five and one in four, that's really fucking good if you're looking for a key combo piece that wasn't banished off the activation cost. And then you have a 1% chance to draw, you know, two out of that three of left in there. So slightly higher than a two out of two, but again, chances are you're not going to be drawing two copies of the same card off of the remaining cards left in your deck with Pot of Desires. So again, like I said, I just want to present the math to you just so you can kind of come to your own conclusions and just have some hard evidence, you know, probability speaking, of what the card does and how it is good. Now, I, don't, I know I kind of only talked about it from the perspective of, you know, going first, but you can kind of use this as a guide to kind of dictate, you know, anything else, you know, going forward in the match. You can kind of alter it, you know, with search cards and, you know, the more the deck gets thinner, the more these numbers change, but it's just kind of a baseline for you to use to kind of form your own opinion about the card and see whether or not you feel that it's worth it. One last thing I wanted to talk about was kind of a funny um, anecdote, I guess, about the card. So there was a Mermail player playing against a Blue Eyes player at my locals, and the Mermail player went first. He summoned Ally of Justice Quarantine against the Blue Eyes player and then passed, basically making it so that the Blue Eyes player was basically fucked if he didn't have an out. Now, the Blue Eyes player opened with four cards and Pot of Desires. He played Pot of Desires, banished 10, and drew two. And they looked at the banished and realized he banished his only two outs to the Ally of Justice Quarantine, which were two copies of Swords of Concealing Light. 
So everyone was kind of laughing at him because that happened, and everyone was kind of drawing that conclusion that Pot of Desires is such a bad card. Well, I kind of stood on the other side of the argument, and I said, well, if he didn't have Pot of Desires, he went from having a 0% chance of winning because he had no out to the Ally of Justice Quarantine, to a 15.3% chance to drawing into that Swords of Concealing Light had he not banished them. So, basically, if he didn't have it at all, he would have lost no matter what. So, Pot of Desires actually gave him the chance to find the out that he needed. Didn't work in his favor, but that doesn't mean that just because it didn't work once, it's ultimately a bad card. Mathematically speaking, that gave him the best chance of winning that entire game out of anything else in his deck. So, just another kind of little food for thought example there. Just wanted to throw that at you guys. So, let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Pot of Desires. This card, in my opinion, is definitely worth the hype. It's really, really good. It's a free plus one, essentially. And, yeah, I just love the card all around. It's going to be really cool to see what people come up with. Uh, really, what kind of decks they run it in. Probably everything, but we'll see. So, as always, thank you all so much for watching the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. See you, man!